A few years ago, we made a video about Himalayan salt lamps, and it's by far the spiciest video on this channel. In this video, I basically break down why salt lamps are fake. It's quite frankly, it's the fakest thing I've ever seen. People have claimed that these pink Himalayan salt lamps increase energy, purify the air, and a laundry list of other claims that are completely not true because none of them are based in science. In fact, Veritasium did a video that debunks Himalayan salt lamps as well. It's really good. So while these really cool pink looking salt lamps don't have any real health benefits. This got me thinking about what we could do with the salt lamp itself, and I was curious if we could melt down the salt lamp into a sword. The first step is to create a sword at a foam board. All right, y'all, I'm gonna freehand this. Oh no, the sound. Oh! There it is. Yes. I got this uh, foam board. This is from our Jumbo Boomerang video. And I had this as like the interior. This is the part that looks like cake. So I think this will actually work out very well for giving us like that really nice dimensional foam that we want. Gotta love that sound. Now it's time to cover up. Oh no. <laughs> Go back in there. <laughs> I think I just wanted it to be two ply. Man, it feels like a nice summer day right now. My fear is I don't want to make this thing too thin and then I go to grab it and the salt just breaks because the salt is going to be relatively fragile in comparison to, let's say, something like aluminum or any other kind of casting we could do. I was trained in the art of foam carving. It's a very girthy sword. I think this is the sword that we've been looking for. Did you pull it from the salt? I did not pull it from the salt, but I will create it from the salt. He says what? Ha! All right, so now we have our sword. And the next step is we're going to make a sandbox to fit this sword. It's officially a safari hack, so I wore it in Africa on a safari. Now, I did own it before, but it, uh, it has the label now. It's got the badge of honor. All right, now here's a hack that I learned from the King of Random channel. You want to cut this really weird looking triangle shape into these boards and then we're going to screw those onto the side of our box so that the box doesn't move lateral when we're pouring our molten liquid, in our case, uh, molten salt. All right, so these are our sand boxes. Now it's time to make our casting sand, also known as green sand. All right, the sand that we're going to be using is sand that I had left over from our liquid sand pool experiment. And the reason that we want to use this specifically is because it's so fine and that's the kind of sand that you want for your casting sand or green sand. Hi all you cool cats and kittens out there. For our next step, we're gonna blend up some kitty litter. But for real, we're actually gonna do that because kitty litter is clay and that's what we need for this mixture. I did not kill my husband. We fed him to the tigers. I'm so hardcore when I lift weights, I eat kitty litter. Yeah! That was the weirdest thing I think I've ever done. <laughs> so we're gonna weigh out 10 pounds of sand. We're gonna throw that into the bucket. Then we're gonna weigh out two pounds of the clay mixture and throw that into the pail as well. And then mix it up and then keep going until we have roughly the volume to fill both of our little sand boxes. Am I helping, Pa? Yep. Am I doing good? You're on the right train. All right, so the next step is we're going to cast our sword in sand. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our sword in half so that we can use each side for one of the sandboxes. Place that one half side down. We're supposed to put talcum powder, but we have baby powder. I think it's like the same thing. I think you guys should do this just so that the item doesn't stick to the, uh, to the sand. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. She's flush. Oh, oh no. no! Nailed it. The disappointment on your face, really. I mean, it, it almost worked. This is hard. Okay, let's do it again. So we flipped this over correctly. The next step is we're gonna put the other sandbox right on top of it. Dunk. And then fill this up with sand. 
and then take out the foam board and then we'll actually be ready to do this. I will admit these are really heavy. It's pretty easy to drop this thing. That's what I'm saying. For the next step, we're going to melt down our Himalayan salt. It's just with regular barbecue bricks. Melted the pink off of it. We're pretty close. So we just keep going. Be employing a new strategy here or? Yeah. We're gonna try it again. Oh, no. I'm like burning the crap out of that. All right, so we thought this was 100% a failure, and we just wanted to see what was underneath, and so we removed the, the actual top of the one sandbox, and it actually poured. It actually worked. I, I'm, I'm in absolute shock that that actually worked the way that it did. We melted down a salt lamp and we created a sword, a sort of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do this again and we're gonna get that salt sword. All right, another improvement before we attempt this again, I'm going to create a device that allows me to pick up the red hot cast iron pot that is filled with liquid salt. A, a big pot of boiling liquid salt is, it's really dangerous. Ta-da! This device allows us to pick up this much larger pot. And when it's really hot, I can take it off the barbecue blast furnace and I can pour the molten salt into our mold. Boom! Um, another thing that we're gonna do uh, prior to trying this again is we're going to crush this up into as fine of powder as we possibly can. One of the problems that we saw last time that we tried this was that the chunks themselves did not melt very well. And so we want to increase the surface area against the hot pot in order to melt the salt all at once. We're mixing the old and the new stuff together. The new is so pink. And the old stuff, it's already gone through the fire once. It's so gray. All right, just like last time, we're gonna put some taco powder down. Well, it wasn't the cleanest. I'm gonna go ahead and load our charcoal barbecue blast furnace up one more time. So we're gonna try just putting this grill on top like that. And then we're gonna put this on top of the actual grill itself, like so. Oh my god, that's amazing. Beautiful. Alright, let's do it. Wait. It's like that was so much material. Boy, that got wow. that got rock solid quick. Alright, so we lost a lot of material up top here uh, because of the way that I, that I was pouring. We, we, we dumped a lot of salt in there. So I'm really curious to see what's happening inside the sand. Um, a good sign though is that it's off gassing right here for what appears to be a vapor, so that's a good sign. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait uh, for about an hour to let the salts on the inside of the box cool off really slowly. Because what we learned from last time is that if you expose the salt to the open air, the temperature difference is too great and the salt begins to crack. And so we wanna give it a lot of time to slowly cool down so that it's not this like shock and then our salt sword cracks in half, if in fact there is anything inside of there. All right, so we've got some time before our salt sword cools off. So we know these salt lamps don't actually purify the air, but there is a scientific solution for making cleaner air. 
I reached out to the team over at Rabbit Air and told them about my obsession with air quality and how I frequently check the air quality on my phone, and they totally get it, and they sent me a Rabbit Air A2. The thing I love the most about the A2 is that it has six stages of purification, with one of them being the BioGS HEPA filter, an activated charcoal filter. This basically means it cleans polluted air like we can get here in LA, which is perfect for the summer months. There's a link in the description below to the Rabbit Air A2. I absolutely love it. We run it all the time. And I just really like knowing that I'm getting clean air inside my house, even if the air is not so clean outside. It's been about an hour, so now we're going to lift this up and see what we created. It could be just a giant mess. It could be a sword. We don't know. It's separated. The piping is separated. Oh my no God. Way. That is so amazing. Wow. I can't believe it worked. We made a sword. I can't believe it. It actually worked. I'm, I'm actually the most shocked that we went from this pretty pink color to this what appears to be almost like metallic gray. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna carefully pull out the sword and I'm gonna put it on this plate right here. And I'm gonna try to piece it back together because I think it's just so cool. It's like a bone, you know? It did pour very well. Th this thing is still 160 degrees. Wow. Look at how <laughs> epic. We cast it a so oh. oh no. Whoop. Well, there we go. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I mean we really, really made a real sword. Puppy. <laughs> She's gonna lick the sword off. All right, so we started off with this actual saw lamp, this material, we crushed it up. We first casted this thing, which was just a mistake actually. We were just kind of learning the whole process. This was actually some spill over of our uh, second cast. This is the actual foam sword that we used for the sand cast. And here's what we actually ended up with, which I'm super stoked on. The outer edge is just so interesting. There's such really cool lines and it actually didn't crack. The back of it cracked immediately, but it was already cracked when we opened it up. We actually made a sword out of a salt lamp. Okay, there we go. We had this crazy idea of taking a Himalayan salt lamp and turning it into a sword, and it actually worked. Uh, and we know that Himalayan salt lamps don't actually purify the air, but a Rabbit A2 does. Big shout out to Rabbit Air. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want to get your own Rabbit Air A2. Um, also, I have a second vlog channel where I make content that it's everything not related to science. Uh, I just started it. There's a link in the description below for that as well. Let me know in the comment section, did you know that you could melt down Himalayan salt lamps and turn them into things. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you really soon.